You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host, and today I have with me back Rob May, City Planner. Good Welcome, to see you. Rob. Nice to see you. A lot of good things going on in the planning department in the city of Brockton. I say planning department because <coughs> it's more than one. It is more than one. Um, it sometimes seems like a one-man band, but um, I have the assistance of a, uh, a city planner, uh, staff planner, Shane O'Brien, and of course the ever-present um, Pam Gurley, who has uh, literally run that department for several years while there wasn't a city planner around here. So, Well, it's good to have a city planner, and it's good to have someone it's who's good been to be doing this. successful in Somerville and other places, right? It, yes, and it, but it's nice to come here and you know you have a new set of opportunities. Um, it, you're you're kind of looking at a, a, a painter's palette, and so there's there's a whole bunch of different choices that we could be doing, and how do we reach out to the community, get them involved? Because it's in in the end, it's their plan. Well, Whatever we're working on, it's their plan. You certainly reached out to the community. There's no question about that. You're you're a Facebook guru. It's all over Facebook, and I forgot to shut my phone off, which isn't usually. Ah what I do it in a meeting, but that was a short ring. Um, you had a very successful meeting last night. I don't want to date it too much, and we recorded it uh, on urban agriculture. Tell us about that. We had over 50 people, mm -hmm. uh, close to 60 actually, uh, show up for a meeting uh, on urban agriculture. We are uh, just kicking off the planning process, so it, it really was a uh, get to know you kind of meeting, get to know what some of the concerns are. Uh, and get people's understanding of, of what they think urban agriculture is. And uh, at the end of this process, um, we'll have a, a plan for the city that we hope will be um, supported by the Board of Health and by the um, City Council um, that will allow people to provide and grow food in their own neighborhoods and to create new business opportunities. So um, urban agriculture, you know, could be anything from someone like me who's growing, uh, I have my own chickens. Oops. That was you again. Wow. Twice in one day. And my staff is laughing at me. That's my wife who knows I'm t doing a show, but that's okay. Oh, shame we'll, on we'll, her. We'll keep it. We'll, we'll um, keep it going. So I have chickens. Uh, we have uh, eight chickens in our backyard and we're, um, we raise them for eggs. But um, urban agriculture is anything from uh, growing food with and for your neighbors right. to being able to grow food and selling it at the farmer's market or right. what they call a backyard CSA, community supported agriculture. I don't have a farm in my backyard, but I can have several tomato uh, plants. But you see some farms in the front yard. Okay, see but some you, farms want it, front you want yard. it to be a little more organized. You want it to be well, planned out, you know, because that was a question I heard about the meeting yesterday. Someone said to me, is everybody going to have corn growing in their front yard? I said, I don't think so. Well, sometimes corn can look a lot nicer than some of the front yards that you're I have right. in my neighborhood. You're right. You're, but you're right on oak, right? I'm right on oak, and we get a lot of traffic, and, and maybe corn's not the best crop there. Okay. Um, it's more of a flower neighborhood. But um, backyards, we could be growing tomatoes or corn or um, tomatoes and peppers are, you know, tradition mm -hmm. um, in, in the Massachusetts area. Um, but... If we have uh, extra or, or, or abundant crops, we should be able to share those with our neighbors. And whether we're growing food and donating it to the food pantry or the students have a, have a community garden at their school right. and they're selling it at the farmer's market, they can take that money then and help pay for class trips or, or bring in you know, special speakers or, or help pay for prom, who knows, whatever. And you're partnering with some schools. Uh, we are working with the Conway School of, a graduate school of landscape uh, architecture, mm -hmm. and we have two graduate students here working with us. Um, last night, I think we had close to 10 uh, Brockton High School students mm -hmm. uh, participating, including a freshman who has produced his own um, uh, sort of a, a greenhouse incubator that's in, a, in an igloo cooler. Mm. Uh, but it's great for you know starting um, seedlings, and it's one of those things that could be scaled up. That if somebody wanted to take, say, an old factory that's been abandoned for years, um, how do we turn some of those into to grow facilities? Um, if you've been in in Market Basket recently, you'll notice there's a, a series of fresh greens that are being grown in Chelsea. Mm -hmm. So why can't we in Brockton be producing, you know, growing produce, packaging it? selling to restaurants and grocery stores, and bring some of that money back here into our community. Okay. Or being a neighborhood of, of immigrants, uh, or a community of immigrants, uh, there are what we call cultural crops, the things that you don't normally find at Stop and Shop or, or um, uh, other major grocery stores that 
you know, are from the islands or from Africa or from Southeast Asia that um, people think as, as, you know, this is home to me. So how can we grow those uh, vegetables here in the city and, and sell wow. them? Wow, and I thought I you started You're a busy off. guy. I'm going to sit here and I'm going to, yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> I'm always busy. I should have just left the phones in the other room. So besides the urban agriculture, you're responsible for Blueprint for Brockton with different committees. There are all sorts of committees. Yes. There have been all sorts of meetings. Um, it's not dozens, too early. Dozens it's of February meetings. now, but you're talking about the next big meeting is going to be early May. Early May, we'll be having our next big meeting where we're going to um, present the community with the first draft. Um, we expect um, a, a lot of people to show up, and you can you can see it at the meeting, or you'll have a chance to look at it online. But we want feedback for every from everybody, and every single document that we've produced so far, every single map, every single chalkboard, you know, mm -hmm. write up, all of that stuff is on our on our web page, and so it's open to everybody. Tell um, us what the web page is. The web page is www.ablueprintforbrockton.com. Easy. And you can go to the city's webpage, um, which is cobma.us, and um, click planning. Click planning, and there's another link to get there, there to get you there. And then we also have a Facebook page, uh, right. so you can get it at several directions. And if you need specific documents translated, we're more than happy to do that. Uh, we want to make sure that everybody, all our communities, get a chance to participate. And you've even expanded it out to the ward level where you got seven different wards. That's that's next, right? Yes. So we've been working with, with uh, the ward counselors uh, and the at-large counselors. Sure. And, and they've uh, appointed people to kind of represent specific ward areas. I, I know you're, you're on the committee ward working with Ward 1, uh, but there's at-large um, advocates also. Uh, we have advocates for the minority community, for the immigrant community, for the youth and the seniors. And mm -hmm. we've had meetings... Um, also at the Senior Center and at the um, Boys and Girls Club. And uh, we've had geographically north, south, east, and west. We've been everywhere, done everything that we can you know, possibly do with a two-man band that we have in our department. But um, it, again, as I said before, it's, it's your plan. It's, it's our community. We should have a, stay, uh, a say in what we do with it. Well, can't, nobody can say that you didn't reach out. That's for sure. I have never seen outreach like this, to be honest with you. We try. We try to be as very open and transparent as possible. Now, you're talking about uh, cities looking good all over the place. A lot of roadways have been done. You were mentioning right before Correct. we went on air about Center Street. We got a grant from the state, um, and we are going to be rebuilding Center Street between Main Street and uh, the CSX Railroad tracks. So we'll be um, building a brand new intersection at Main, or excuse me, at Montello and Center, okay. and we'll build new roadway because the trolley tracks are still underneath Center. Right. Uh, and so we'll be doing full depth reconstruction and then um, st uh, streetscape. And there'll be not a lot of new um, LED light, so the area will get brighter. There'll be new trees. Um, it'll really look so great when this is done lots in the fall. Of, lots of stuff to come. We a just, lot of stuff We happening. just scratched the surface, okay? I'm going to have to graduate you to the next level. I need an which hour. Is, well, two hours. Yeah, two okay. hours special for okay. the holidays. Sounds good. Thank okay. you, Rob. Thank I you very much. It. Always a pleasure. Have a great night. You are watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. Stay tuned for more events, places, people, and faces right here in the City of Champions.